So everybody in mail, of course, knows that marketing fatigue is the biggest enemy that we're dealing with. People are inundated with marketing messages every day, and so we have to get people, we have to get tired of what we're sending them. So we worry about fatigue, oh, seen it, been there, done that. How do we get people to continue to open the mail? So marketing fatigue is the enemy. So we have to think about several things. One, the biggest driver in response for direct mail is the written word. So we always have to think about the message. And that's because 95% of all decisions we make are based on emotion. So a lot of times we're using different copy drivers to try to pull on people, people's emotions, basically, and provoke them to respond. So we have to think about the message, critically important. We also have to think about the senses. We're sensory beings. One of the greatest strengths of print is that it's tangible. So we have to leverage that. I'm going to give you a lot of great ideas for that today. Customer product loyalty will double if they can experience a brand with more senses. So the more senses we can engage, the greater the brand loyalty. So think about that. How many different ways can we use the tangibility of print to get people to be more and more loyal to the brand? And then we have to think about human behavior. We're tangible, tactile, sensory beings, we're curious. So if we can give somebody physical, tangible media, today we're inundated by media. All of us are consuming over eight hours of media, and most of that is digital. And so print becomes kind of the quiet among the noise. We have an opportunity to physically exist. We're not hidden behind an on-off button or under a piece of glass. We are physically there. And think about it when your favorite magazine arrives. And it's like, everybody leave me alone, I want to read my favorite magazine. Like, give me some space, I want to just sit and read and enjoy. So think about human behavior and how we can get people to interact with <coughs> tangible media. And because of that, print really is an opportunity like never before. In a digital world, print is now a huge opportunity. So today we're just going to leverage it for all it's worth. I have a whole bunch of ideas for everybody, so we're just going to jam. Let's dive right in. Idea number one is creating texture. So, as I said, the tangibility of print is one of its greatest strengths. So I'm going to show you lots of, I'll call it print eye candy. I have a huge collection of print materials that I've been collecting for decades now, I would believe. Um, and so I'm just going to share with you all sorts of great ideas. Um, this one was for People Magazine. This is a trifold brochure. This is using texture through a soft touch and a gloss. Coating. There's also a little die cut on the cover, so you've got some texture going on. Um, and you can see the visual texture. It's not only a physical texture, but a visual texture going on. You can see the glare opens up. So they're using black paper, black ink, they're using soft touch and gloss. Just really interesting use of texture. Um, this one's a nice, kind of more subtle one. Um, this is a sculptured die um, emboss. And so you can kind of see on the back cover there, um, you can see that texture that it creates. So just subtle ways to create texture when somebody picks it up. Um, they also used a really toothy, uncoated sheet on this particular one for the cover. Um, and then they used a, uh, a translucent sheet to show through on that first text page. Kind of nice. This one, I'm going to show you guys, by the way, some very simple things. And all the way up, I'm going to kind of, kind of give you the full spectrum. Because I believe that really exciting things can be done on low budgets, as well as, of course, on high budgets. I mean, everybody, if you had huge budgets, you can do amazing things. I'm actually most impressed by some of the smaller ideas. Um, this would be what I would call a smaller idea. This is a large card um, type of a postcard format. And this is for a March Mania um, event. And I'm going to tip this for you. And you can see that there's actually a wood grain texture printed on this piece. Simple, simplest mail format you can have. And yet they created the physical sense of wood grain. And this is done with a raised clear digital ink. The other thing I wanted to show you is on the back, they tipped on a little ticket. So for this event, it had a little ticket. Um, and I like that little uh, engagement technique, that little interaction device, so to speak, where you peel it off. You've given people something to do. They peel it off. And so, just really nice how they also attach the ticket to the back. 
Um, this is a raised dig clear digital ink. Um, there are several different brands. I'm sure you guys have heard of them. Um, on the market, this can also be done with UV. Um, there's forms of uh, the special effects screen printing as well that can do this type of thing, but creating texture through raised ink. So just neat that these types of things can be done on short run and long run scenarios, but they can create some really, really nice raised textures. So, okay, now we've got our idea texture. Now let's talk about how can we apply that to direct mail. So now we're moving into direct mail. How do we use texture in creative ways through mail? This one's one of my favorites um, because, again, it's very simple. Um, this is for sappy fine paper. This is a large cardboard billboard format. Um, and what they did is they did heavy ink coverage, and then they did a geometric pattern in varnish over the top of one side, you know, the coating. And so when the light hit it, you got this really incredible geometric pattern that hits the light. But still, the text is very, very readable. But there's something really distracting and special about that piece. When that comes in the mail, big billboard postcard type of a format with a geometric pattern on it, what is this? That's getting picked up first. And I love its simplicity. We're talking about a varnish technique here. Um, but creatively using it, not just in a flood coating or even a spot coating of, you know, some sort of a, you know, uh, in register with an image or something, but kind of just saying, no, let's put a geometric pattern over the top and just be distracting and stylish. Um, this one's interesting because this is Southwest. This is back of the envelope, which, by the way, I think is an opportunity that a lot of us miss. Um, back of the envelope is space as well. We don't know which way people will see the mail. Um, this I thought was interesting because this is an embossing register with a varnish in register as well. So it's like the little cluster of the um, suitcases has a little bit of texture and a little bit of shine. And there's something that just makes you go, okay, this is interesting. I'll take a look. Um, I love its kind of simplicity in what they did, and they could have just had photo there. They didn't have to do that, but they created texture. They became distracting, um, and it can be distracting in small and big ways. This is a simple one. This is a textured envelope. This is physically in the paper. So we're not always working with um, you know, embossing or special print effects, things like that. Sometimes it's just use a different paper on the envelope that has a texture in it. This is physically in the paper. So that also can be distracting and have people kind of go, oh, well, this is different. This is kind of interesting. All right, number two is integrating technology. Print is a wonderful carrier of technology. So I want to show you guys. Everybody here knows what variable data is. I also know there's some really great sessions on variable data going on um, today. So um, I thought this one was neat. I didn't want to talk about just basic variable data, putting somebody's name in something. Um, I wanted to show an example of using the data that we have that sometimes we don't realize we have, if that makes sense. So this was for a university. Um, and every, everybody, everybody knows that like the students write an essay and, to get into a college, right? And then they have a list of kids that are accepted, and then those kids get acceptance letters. Okay, so those kids all wrote essays. And what this university did is all of the accepted students, they took, they read their essays, and they took one nugget of gold from every kid's essay. It's the same, same sample. Your words have made an impression on us, so we made an impression of them. At Seattle University, you were one of one, and nothing could be greater. This was mailed to them, catalog envelope. They sent their words back to them. They basically said, we heard you, we loved what you had to say, we're giving you a poster of kind of the nugget of gold from your essay, and you're accepted, by the way, and we'd love for you to join our school. And I think the brilliant use of kind of data that you receive that you, you kind of don't even think about. They had all of this essay material, and somebody said, let's send it back to them. And to the student, it's personalized. They heard me. They liked what I said. They sent me back something of value. And then each kid, they had a whole bunch of different layouts so that not everybody got the same poster. 
Um, but when you think about it, this is one 11 by 17 sheet of paper folded in half and put in a catalog envelope. And the value of this is off the charts. So I want you to think about variable data as you're going to learn today um, and as you think about it and take this information back with you. What can we use that we're not already using? How can we be more creative with how we're using variable data? Um, this is a great, this is an AccuZip product. I love, love, love um, this technique for using variable data. This is a driveway to parking lot variable map. You have a physical location, and obviously if you're sending mail, you have an address to work with. It puts the two together and says, you're only 2.1 miles from us. Here's the map to show you where we are compared to where you are. I think it's one of the nicest uses, kind of great technology for variable data. Can we tell somebody where we are and remind them where we are? And all we're doing is using their address and our address. So, um, you know, certainly ask about this one. This is a great, great product. This is, this is a fascinating technology that I wanted to share with you guys. I think it's kind of where um, print and the intersection of print and digital are really going. This is a technology called Pebble Post. And the way this works is if a company has an account with Pebble Post, this technology, what happens is a lot of times we might be surfing online, we go to shop somewhere, and, you know, we're thinking about getting some shoes or whatever it is, and we kind of abandon our cart. We, we change our mind. But we've been there, we looked, we thought about it, but we left. This technology then says, hey, this customer was looking at these shoes or your products or whatever, and it gets a piece of printed mail into the mail stream within 24 hours. So you then get a targeted printed mail piece that is related to that company. They can send you a special offer, I and mean, it depends on what they want to do with that information, but they can send you an offer, they can remind you what you can get, whatever. But it is the intersection of technology and print, and I just think it's pretty neat where things are starting to go. This is another um, cool accident product, living mail. And this is cool too, because this is interacting using technology with mail as it's in the mail stream and with the recipient. So this, oh, this living mail technology can send text, voice, or email to communicate with the recipient while the mail is in the mail stream about to arrive, things like that. So just also really, really worth looking into um, as well. Love the use of technology for mail. Um, this is just a fun example of augmented reality. So um, there are two types of augmented reality. There's location-based and object-based. So location-based is when you've got your phone and it uses your GPS and interacts with, let's say, the buildings around you or something. Um, object-based is when you use your phone and it sees an object, recognizes it, and something happens. So this is actually um, a spread where you, you scan a QR code and then once you hover your phone over the top, you know, the, the cards flip and the candles light up and the clock spins and all sorts of things happen. So, you know, I think this is also another example of where print is going. I think it's early, but I think it will become very, very seamless um, at some point because we all live with our cell phones. We always have them with us. And I think having a printed piece and then going to, you know, a customer a demo or to shop or whatever, I think that's where things are going. So. So let's look at technology for mail. Um, this piece is, a, is responsible for a capacity crowd at an event. Um, this is our new Chicago. This is a very, very, very simple format. Two panels glued together so that you get these little peekaboo windows. So experience our new, live it, feel it, breathe it, get a closer look. You peel those open, and each one has a little QR code and a universal symbol for play a video. I think everybody in this room knows if you, scan, if, you, if you can get somebody to scan a QR code, you get an awful lot of data. So, look, we've all seen bad QR codes, things used incorrectly, but this one was a great, great use of the simplicity. And I love to, this one's for, this was at, for millennials and, you know, Gen Z. So you also can see that it doesn't have to say 
scan this barcode with your phone. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind of like they know what to do, right? And so it's just, it's, it's, it's simplicity is part of what works. Scan, get to a cool video. And of course the payoff has to work. It's got to be a cool video or whatever it is. That destination has to make sense or have value. But anyway, simple format, simple inexpensive use of technology. This was just a nice use of um, personalized URLs, personalization, this was also a mailer. So, you know, simple, simple ways. It doesn't always have to be really complex types of formats or uses. And this is just for fun on the high-end side. There's a, this is a video in print technology. These are great for highly targeted scenarios, very special um, prospects, things like that. It's got a little on button and it's got a mini little LCD in the physical piece and you just hit the button and they can each have their own video, customized videos. Um, there's some really neat, neat technologies and this type of thing is pretty impressive for very high value targets and things like that. So imagine getting a personalized video that shows up for you. Um, pretty neat. Okay, so now I'm going to go in the opposite direction. We just were on technology. Now I'm going to go in the other direction to the human touch. Okay, so as I mentioned, living in a digital world, right, things feel, can feel pretty impersonal these days. So then how do we add a sense of personalization? There's lots of different ways to do it. Um, even simple things like this. This is actually a bounce back, so this would ride with an order. Um, and I love the concept of just a simple thank you. I mean, just like Christian was talking about, just thanking everybody and how much they appreciate your business. Um, people feeling um, like they weren't taken care of, like they were unappreciated, is one of the main reasons why they get their business elsewhere. So. Even very simple things, like a little handwritten thank you, can go a long way. So, we can't handwrite everything, right? I know there's people here going, we can't handwrite everything, Trish. Nice idea, but no. Okay, so here's a couple things uh, to think about. There's a uh, site called copydoodles.com, and they have all real handwritten graphics that in all different handwriting styles that you can choose from. You can download them, import them, colorize them all sorts of things. They're really neat for, um, like if you have a direct mail letter and you want to put notes in the margins or you know, make it look like it was interacted with by a human but you can't have everybody in your company sit there and handwrite everything. Okay, so that's one of them. And then on the high tech side, there is a technology called handwriting.io and it's about as close to human handwriting as you can possibly get on the tech side. And what they do is they vary every instance of a letter. Every instance is varied, and that's really what tells us that it's human, right, is when it's not every single A is exactly the same, right? They're all different, every instance. So it really, truly mimics real human handwriting. So it's handwriting.io. Other ways to create a human touch. This is neat. This was, um, this was from um, King Arthur Flower. And what this is, is this also actually happens to be a bounce back, but it's, you know, meet PJ, you know, from our baker's hotline. And here's her picture, and here's a little bit about her. It's kind of putting a face to a brand. Um, I call it the humanization of a brand, but you know, you'll know, you notice over time that brands have gone from a more intellectual uh, connection to um, more emotional connections, right? We're talking about 95% of our decisions being based on emotion. It's all about that emotional, personal, person-to-person -person connection. Um, and so if you look for this, you'll start to see it. Even, here's an example, um, Williams-Sonoma catalog. Used to be a catalog filled with beautiful housewares, pots, pans, appliances. Still is. But if you look at their catalogs now, it's, you know, lifestyle photos and meet the chef and take a class. And, you know, it's all about creating that more emotional connection with their products. And so this is an example of um, King Arthur Flower creating a more emotional connection. Like, we're not just a place that sells flour and baking goods. We've got a whole group of people that want to help you. Emotional connection. Human touch. So human touch in creative ways for mail. One of the simplest things is a handwritten address with a first class stamp. 98 to 99% open rate. And I think that's why marketers spend a lot of time trying to mimic those types of human um, you know, keeps that kind of human effect. So, 
So there's other ways. So whether no matter what side of the political spectrum you're on, you'll start to see you see this a lot in um, political mailings. But these are just some examples. You can see here that look of handwritten text on the envelope. And again, it's kind of feeling like it's a human that interacted with it. How do you create that sense of a human interacting? Um, another way is through the actual appearance of a human being. You'll notice the eye contact. Again, this is emotional connection, human connection. I think dogs count. I'm going to put animals in there, too. <laughs> um, but that whole, the, like, how do you turn down that person looking at you? It was actually a, um, a case study, a uh, not-for-profit organization. They were sending out their materials, and they always had the envelope with the donation information on it. And um, they decided, you know, why don't we put a person's face and a testimonial on that, um, on that envelope? Because what happens is people get the mail, or they separate the brochure, they put the envelope on their desk, and kind of all get to this later. And a blank envelope, it's like, hmm, eh, right? And they put this human face on with a testimonial, and their donations skyrocketed. I actually ran this test kind of interesting. I was like, okay, that's, that's interesting, it makes sense. So then, um, like a year later or so, a girlfriend of mine sent out an email um, about a kind of a fundraiser to help a woman with uh, breast cancer. But she sent out just a, it was a word file with the little ribbon, the, the, uh, the pink ribbon on it, and it just had some different help, such and such, and you know, it was a fundraiser. And so I sent her back a note, and I said, unsolicited advice. But this is what I do, and I just 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 take it, take it or leave it. We don't have a photo. If she she'll let if she'll let you put a photo on there, I would suggest a photo and a little bit of personal information about her. Nothing too deep, but just who is she? You know, does she have kids? What does she do? You know, um, picture of her. I said you you need to kind of connect. Otherwise, it's just a piece of paper with a ribbon on it. And she said, oh, okay, thanks. You know, she resent it, and she sent me a note. And she said, the first day we didn't get it, when we sent the first letter, we didn't get any donations. When I sent the revised one with more information in the picture, we started to get donations in. Donations were just coming in. I think she got like 20 in that first day. So it works. The whole emotional connection. We want to, humans want to connect with humans. So, um, you know, I certainly can't take credit for that whole thing by any means, but I just, people connect with people. So... Human connection. This is just a simple one. It's a birthday card. When a, when a furniture company sends you a birthday card, that's kind of interesting. I don't know. It's even pop up. I thought that was nice. Um, but they send you a special offer and a birthday card. A lot of times you know the birthdays of your customers. Kind of a neat thing to do. And again, it's kind of all about the relationship and those touch points. Can we make them feel appreciated? Can we do something special for them that doesn't have a big marketing offer or a big ask associated with it? Can we just say thanks? Or can we just give them a little surprise? Make their day. Number four is visual tricks. This is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite low budget, tri uh, low budget strategies. Um, people ask me a, a lot about, you know, what can I do on the cheap? And this is one of my favorite things. You can do some really impactful things just with playing with imagery. This is a Best Buy mailer, and there's a little short trim right there. It's open here, there's a short trim. And so, in having people open the brochure, you've had them open the door of the oven. It's a simple thing, but who's not gonna open the oven? What could be in there? I'm a little disappointed. I wanted cookies or <laughs> it's a stove. But still, cool that they use this big image of a high-end stove. I, I really, really like the concept, and they carried it through all the way inside. So that's cool when you've got really cool imagery like high-end um, you know, appliances. But what if you sell scanning equipment? On the B2B side, it can be really difficult to be creative. So I love this one. Um, it says, the best hardware will provide good pictures. It says, open, see the little tab? The best software tools help you take even better ones. Think of this as a trifold, where the fold-in panel folds kind of off the cover and creates a little peekaboo window, and then they did that in register there, that little x-ray, so they, they, they make uh, x-ray software. 
So I just love this idea that you can even you can still be creative no matter what it is you actually sell. Um, this one was a big hit on um, Fold of the Week, my video series, 60 Second Super Cool Fold of the Week. Um, and technically it's not a fold, but it's my show and I can do whatever I want. <laughs> so this one is cool because this is two large cards. Think of this as like two large cards with a little eyelet fastening them together. That's all this is, this one in an envelope. Fun times of brewing at Eagle's Trace. Turn this bottle upside down. <laughs> what? Thank you for the applause. I agree. Totally. This one always makes me think, what can I put together that can interact with each other? Brilliant, right? Two cards, one island, into an envelope, but the use of imagery is brilliant. So I love, love, love this one for its concept and its simplicity. So let's look at visual uh, tricks for direct mail. This one's simple. Okay, so the two cards, this is kind of like the RMU piece with the, with the um, QR codes, but all this is is a little, a little house, and it's all about winterproofing your home, and you peel up the little windows and doors. Um, they even use a little foil on the windows to give them a little shimmer. So it's simple, but people want to know what's under the little door. They're going to do it. <laughs> They're going to open it. We can't resist. We're human beings, and we're curious. This one I love. This is one of the oldest pieces in my collection, but I keep bringing it out because phones used to look like this, and I think it's so funny. Um, I love this because this is just a very simple format. It's got a little short fold on the front, and so basically, when people open it, they take the phone off the cradle, and the phone actually, the inside of the phone is actually on the inside of the flap. So it's so simple, and then it opens up into one more spread. It's an old Verizon piece. But I love that you've made somebody pick up the phone off the cradle. Um, this one's neat. This is kind of on the higher end. Uh, this one is a shutter card. And you pull it, and it does a really cool reveal of an image. So there's also an awful lot um, that can be done on kind of the higher end with some really creative formats. This went out to a targeted audience for a special event. Um, so the theme was transformation. So it's kind of neat to have the shutter card that transforms. And then this one's nice. This is, um, you know, a, a long run mail piece. And what's neat about this is there's a window on the back of the envelope, which I also think is creative. Um, you've got Mickey Mouse, and his he's doing his little magic thing. And the magic dust is in register on the outside of the envelope. So I love that they've done this kind of. He's using his magic from inside the envelope, and it's swirling on the outside of the envelope. Just really, really clever. Why is choosing great paper? This is an easy one. I mean, paper is one of the easiest things we can do to affect the feel of a piece. Um, this one, it's also a very cool format, but this one uses a pearlized sheet. And by the way, um, one of the things I always like to mention when I'm talking about paper is you can't always use the specialty sheet. Sometimes they're too expensive, but there's so many special effects these days that you could use you know, a, a, a coating that's got a little bit of shimmer in it to create the effect of the specialty sheets. So there's kind of lots of different ways to approach things these days. But anyway, I love this piece. It's for a tiny jewel box. They're a high-end um, jewelry uh, company, and they are in DC. But I love this piece. And just they use the shimmer, and it just made all, the, all of the beautiful jewelry pop. This is a, just a beautiful McCoy silk. This is for Tiffany. This is a wrapped accordion, one of my favorite formats. Um, put that in a rectangular shape, and it's awesome as a self-mailer. But this one was a square format. Beautiful. Just a beautiful clean white. Um, this piece is a Grupo Cordonans sheet. And if you can see it, it's got like a wavy pattern in it. It's kind of a nautical thing. It's got a wavy pattern. That pattern is physically in the paper. Um, just cool. But again, I think, as we saw with the texture of the wood grain, we can also create texture as well. So you could probably create a texture too. So this is an iron cross, it's cool. Got a little pocket, and then this beautiful wavy accordion comes out. Love it. No. Paper and creative ways for mail. This one's simple. Actually, it's another Southwest piece. I love it. It's just a black envelope. And that label, by the way, is not printed on. It's adhered to the envelope. Something about this piece feels important. You better open it. <laughs> Very cool. I love its simplicity. The quiet sometimes is what makes something even more distracting. 
rather than kind of yelling at people. It's like the quiet of this, you know, black envelope with a special label on it. Um, this piece is from Germany. Very cool. It's, again, talking about paper here. This, this was part of a series. Um, red paper with white digital ink, and then it had a black insert with ink, with the white ink, with the color printed over it. Um, I don't read German, but I want to go to this party. Whatever it is, I'm there. <laughs> um, and this is also neat. This is just using, this is a specialty sheet, a foil uh, coated sheet. And it just, it's just cool. I don't know. It's just, again, it's got shimmer, it's leveraging. Um, you know, the different types of creative sheets that are out there. So very cool. Six is going wild with ink. Lots of cool stuff we can do with ink these days. Um, this one is just expanded color gamut. So CMYK, orange, green, violet. Um, this one was also done on a UV press, and so it just has a lot of pop. Um, and this is just a roll fold, but it's just beautiful. The color just is so bold. Um, this one is just using spot metallic inks and spot varnish. Um, this one has a belly band, and you can see, you can probably see a pattern um, on, the, on the red there. That is done through varnish. That's literally just gloss varnish versus, that's the, the effect of the gloss versus the dull varnish, and that's just that variation that happens um, uh, when you look at it. So it's subtle, but it's cool. And then this one opens up. This one actually becomes a circle. Yeah. Kind of a neat carrier piece. It's funny, the printer who did this one sent it out to some of his customers and said, hey, look what we just did for a client. And then they had a client who said, hey, we've got a golf tournament coming up. <laughs> Guaranteed, right? So then this becomes a huge golf ball. One of the neat things I think about print and format is how you can dress it up, dress it down, completely change its character. This became a big golf ball. Went from fancy to a big golf ball and a very cool invitation for a golf event. So, so many neat things you can do. This is an example of just different fluorescent inks. Um, a lot can be done both digitally and um, offset these days. So just cool, using those kind of touch plates of bright color. And then this is just kind of on the, I don't know, extreme end of things. Um, this is a photochromatic ink, so it changes under black light. Um, there's also thermochromatic inks that change when, when heat's applied. Um, there's also the ones that change with water. Um, as well, hydrochromatic. So lots of cool technology going on too um, with inks and what's, what we can do with them in the future. So I don't know, just kind of our little space age example, fun. So ink and creative ways for mail. I like this one because it's simple. Again, I love the simple ideas. This is Marriott. You can see along the top, they've got a um, silver metallic ink. And when you flip it over, the flap is just silver metallic ink. And by the way, this is another really nice use of back of the envelope. This is all about using your reward points. And what I love is that message it sends you of, you got points to use, why don't you take a vacation? Like, it's time. Look, that could be you. <laughs> so I really like the use of metallic ink, and I like the use of back of the envelope and its simplicity. I love that they resisted the urge to put a big marketing message on it. Instead, they just sent a subliminal message of, be on vacation right now. Um, this one's neat because this is just a very simple um, campaign. This is two uh, billboard large card um, pieces. And what they did is where the ice is, I guess zooming in doesn't help, but there's a glitter UV coating only where the ice is. And so when you pick it up, it looks exactly like ice. So just a simple thing on what's normally a very basic format that people don't really do anything fancy with. So I thought this was neat. And, and for the printers in the audience, I think thinking about ways that you can give ideas to your clients, because they don't always come up with it. They don't know what you can do always. You know, to be able to say, you know, we could hit that with some glitter or with a, with a wet um, kind of a looking, uh, you know, gloss UV or with something that can give it some shimmer. Just giving them a few of those ideas to help enhance. And this is just a nice example of using a spot fluorescent ink in a few selective spots. I mean, just simple, simple things. Um, that you can do with ink. Seven is adding dimension. So a lot of dimensionality to the physical sheet, of course, right? Because it exists. So um, I just love some of these things. This is a simple um, invitation to an event. It says pull down there. And when you pull, it activates a little flipper format. And what's neat is they did the acrobats. There's a little acrobat 
animation where they swing in and back out, and it's just pulled by this little thing. You created like a little animation. Um, so cute. Think of it as kind of like a long strip that's like a little accordion glued back to back to back and staggered, and it goes flip, 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 flip. So really, really neat. I've actually seen, by the way, that flipper technique used on a 9 by 12 pocket folder. And that was cool, too, off the cover of a pocket folder. So just saying, plant that idea for everybody. Um, okay, so this one is neat. This one uh, is flat when it's closed. Um, this is a starburst um, type of a format. But when you open it, it goes into a big poster format. So really, really, technically, it's a Turkish map starburst format. Um, Turkish map is the official format, but starburst easier. Um, but anyway, it's just some series of diagonal and parallel folds, and it folds down like that, and it goes flat, and you get this really big reveal, which is very cool. Um, this piece is just, I don't know, I'm just going to show you, it's too hard to explain. Four pieces locked together, ships flat, but when you kind of activate them, they turn into a sculpture, basically, and they, they're a self-standing sculpture. So all four pieces are the same shape as that one side, and they lock together. They have little notches in the corner joints, and they lock together. It goes flat, and then it kind of hinges and opens up. So I love that one. So dimension for mail. This one was Canada Post. And oh, it's just a little piece, and it opens up, and there's a little diagonal fold that happens, and that leg extends up and kicks the soccer ball. So I showed this type of format on Fold of the Week, and then this happened. Somebody said, well, why couldn't it give a business card? So I love that because, I, again, it's that idea, it's kind of like that fancy one to the golf ball, the, the really creative kind of image effect of the leg kicking the soccer ball to, hey, here's our business card. I love that. I've seen a wallet one that has money coming both sides. They did it on both sides, and it came up and down. So there's lots of neat things. But you can see there, it's just got a little score, and it activates, and then the little, uh, the little diagonal fold lifts it up. This one's neat because this is just a double parallel fold, so in half and in half again. All they did is they basically glued the two panels together, but left the center open, die cut it, and popped it out in the other direction. Very, very simple dimensional format. Really cool um, use of just simple dimensionality there. So now let's take this same concept and let's use, this was for our casino. Same format, but now instead of gluing the panels together, only glue the bottom. And what happens is, they also have these little violators on the side, but what happens is they did these die cuts on these different focal points, but by having only the bottom glued, it created some dimension, some lift, and you get a little shadow because there's a lift between those panels. And so they had those reveals. I just, I just love, love, love that piece. So number eight is go big or go home. I feel like you can't say go big without saying or go home, but I don't really mean it. Don't really go home. Um, but I love, love, love these types of large formats as well. So making a big impression is also an opportunity. These days are so many kind of large format opportunities. Digital presses have larger area now. You know, Offset, of course, has always had a large area. This piece, although it doesn't seem that way, this piece is about 20 by 30 when it's open. So to give you a sense, there's your phone next to it. This is an oversized um, booklet brochure with big, luxurious pages. This was digitally printed and on a basically a B2 sheet size. So really, really cool. And a great opportunity to just stand out. Um, this one is a really, really cool format. Um, this is a roll fold with an inverted short fold and nested accordion follow me. This is the back cover, actually. And in the back cover, there's a little, see where it says transparent? That's the, basically the glueless pocket. And the accordion fold comes out, and then the roll fold unrolls, and then the short fold folds down. So you end up with this poster, but when it's folded up, you get a glueless pocket scenario. And what happens there is you get kind of tension at the fold so that you can put light materials in. 
And what I love about this type of blueless pocket format is that when the pocket doesn't have anything in it, you don't say, well, where's the insert? But an empty pocket folder is empty, right? So this is kind of neat from a brochure standpoint. Also great for anybody who's into kind of, you have clients that are into kind of green, um, you know, sustainable types of things. There's no glue, this is machine folded. The insert would be by, by hand likely, but nonetheless, just a great format and large. You get this great poster reveal. Um, this is an iron cross, so it's got that kind of plus shape that a lot of us are familiar with, but they tapered the, uh, the panels. Um, this piece is actually quite large. This is a kind of catalog graph size, and the reason I wanted to show this is because I think a lot of times specialty formats we look at for events. We see them as small, we make them little, we make them for events, but you can blow up a specialty format. Use, this one uses variable data, this one has an insert. Um, I have a version of this that was like for Toys R Us with a catalog, it was a catalog wrap, had a big toy catalog in it, on the outside it looked like a holiday gift. Um, so there's, there's really nice, I've seen colleges do this, um, once I showed this on Fold of the Week, some colleges put their materials in it, wrapped them really nice. Um, so there's lots of nice, nice things you can do with an oversized specialty format. So using scale in creative ways, um, these are just oversized envelopes. I also want to show you how they did this. They flipped it so that the envelope flap is at the bottom. The return address is in the upper left corner. And in doing so, you end up with like a billboard on the other side. A lot of times we're using the best side for the address, but you can also do kind of a creative. That one, the craft one, I honestly wish that died. That was a hugely successful direct mail um, campaign. And again, I think so much of it has to do with the message. We talked about the message and how important it is. They used a different paper. It stands out. Um, again, an oversized envelope has a higher open rate as well. So just kind of cool stuff. This is one of my favorite things. This is a zip strip, which I really like, interaction device. But this piece, folded down into a mailable format, no problem, opens up. Think of it kind of like letter folding open, try folding open and then it tri-folds open again. So in essence, all this is, is a poster with a flap and zip strip in the upper right corner. You see it up in the way top, upper right corner? Think of this as like a poster with a mini flap and a zip strip embedded in it. So this whole thing folds down and just has a flap and a zip strip. Really creative way to get somebody something huge that kind of unexpectedly. This is neat too. This one opens up. Along the horizontal between the blue and the orange, that's the break. Think of this as like a 90 degree turn on a gatefold, big long gatefold. Opens up, opens up again. Huge, so basically accordions, and then it has the gate. So interestingly, that piece from Tiny Jewel Box, the red one with the pearlized sheet, it's the same folding style. It's just turned and longer. Crazy, with an extra fold. So anyway, just something neat. Um, but this is neat because it accordion folds down, and this is, by the way, a machinable format. Um, accordion folds down, gate folds in, right angle fold one more time. Very cool. Okay, nine is focusing on the details. So some of the greatest opportunities are in the small details, and I think a lot of times the small details kind of make or break um, whether something gets noticed or not. We kind of notice when something has something a little bit special about it. So we're going to talk about details. Um, this piece was for Acura. This was a mailer. Um, this had a soft touch on the outside, but they also did these little, little die-cut circles on the piece that gives you kind of a little sneak peek of what's inside. It's a detail thing, um, but you kind of wonder, well, what's in there? And when you open it, it's got a little stitched brochure on the inside. There you can see the window for the mailing address. This did go in a uh, clear envelope, I think. Um, kind of a higher end piece. This one I like because this is just, this is a detail thing that they didn't have to do. This was a special event invitation. And you can see they've got the little corners that are cut out. It kind of looks like a ticket. And this event was a multi-day event where they had all these tickets for different things in that day. And so what they did is each ticket, so to speak, had a different feature, you know, the golf and the dinner and the whatever. And 
they didn't have to do the extra die cut. They really could have gotten away with just making the whole thing rectangular and folding it down and everybody would have been fine. But I love that they made, they kind of took that extra step and actually made it look like a string of tickets. I love that. And then they're perfed, by the way. So they're all perfed and you tear them off. So just kind of cool detail stuff. This one is for Target. And a little detail here, that where the dots are, there's a little embossing register, and so there's a little, almost feels like braille, it's like a little bumpiness all over there. Um, there's a little miniature, kind of asymmetrical accordion, we'll call it, on the left, which is neat. Um, but here's the part that I also think is cool. They did a shot of color on the back. And I just love that they, it's, it's blank, there's nothing on it, but they put the color there, and I love that they took the opportunity to not leave the back blank. They kind of left the back blank and kind of left it alone, the actions on the front. I love that they added that bit of color, that little pop. Um, I just thought that was smart, and I love the detail of it. So now let's look at detail for mail in creative ways. Um, this one's neat. This is for a uh, red envelope. This is a direct uh, self-mailer that came through the mail. Um, and I love this. See where it says $50? There's a little coupon. That is a peel-off coupon that not only has a unique shape, but it is also placed in register with the ribbon image behind it. So it looks like it's attached to the ribbon. And most of the time when we get any type of a mailer that's got a, a coupon in it, it's always completely you know, perpendicular, it's, not, it's always straight, it's usually got little rounded corners, and you peel it up, very predictable. But I love that they took the opportunity to, to make it interact with the image that it's sitting on, and they gave it a unique shape. So it's a detail that they did not have to do. These are small details, little bits of silver foil accents. Little, the life lock, the, the savings there, there's a couple little, that Amex in the corner, that little logo in the upper left for their platinum card or whatever is just a little mini stamped hit of silver. And that piece um, on the lower right, that is a Disney piece. They totally could have just printed it and sent it. That could have been a little seal, or they even could have used a, you know, a spot metallic ink even, to give it a little touch of shimmer. Instead, they did an embossing register and a foil stamp right where it says pixie dust for you. It's a detail, but it stands out. Um, okay, so this one, I call it, sometimes I name this stuff, this one I call party on the back. Okay, so <laughs> this is Target Pharmacy. Um, very serious stuff, right? It's pharmaceuticals, very serious. Blank envelope, pharmacy reward. But on the back, kind of cool. They've used the back of the envelope. That's one of my main themes today. Back of the envelope is an opportunity. The other thing I like about this is both of these were from Target Pharmacy, two different sizes, two different patterns on the back. I think a lot of times as uh, you know, direct mailers and as marketers, we think that a subtle change people will notice. Oh, We'll just change that line of type right there, and it'll be different, you know. Or we'll go from, you know, blue to green, and they'll, you know, it's different. We'll move this photo from left to right, and it'll be different. People don't notice those small, they seem big to us. Well, we move the photo, you know. It's different. No, <laughs> people don't notice those types of things. Um, and so what I love about this is you can have two more different backs of the envelope. And yet they're both from Target Pharmacy. Um, and you know, you're not going to say, yeah, I already got this. Like, no, no, I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one's like, this is a, this is a cool form. It's got a zip strip, the countdown is on. Um, just a creative way to get into the piece can be powerful. So this has a zip strip that opens up and you just get in that way and it's cool. It's just an interesting way to get in. It's a detail. This one I like also for its simplicity in getting into the piece in a different way. Think of this as literally two panels, that's it, fold two panels together. There is a, around the bottom there, there's a little shape that's, that's perfed, and it says lift here. I apologize, it's a little hard to see from a distance because it's small, it says lift here. Look inside, give your friends and family free movies. So you just peel it open, rather than, you know, it could have been tabbed, 
or fugitive glued and just sent that way. But I love that they created a unique shape, a fun way to get in. And by the way, this was a very, very successful um, direct mail series. And this one also had a little peel up, another little uh, interaction device, little peel up cards for free movies. But anyway, I love this just simplicity in adding a perf to just a two panel um, mailer. Okay, so number 10, my grand finale. Use a cool format. Um, formats are definitely the world I live in, and I've been studying these for a very long time. Um, so there's a lot of neat things that can be done, both on um, kind of the extreme side and also on the low budget side. So this is neat. This is a stepped accordion, um, and basically the, the, the scores are tapering to create a stepped effect. This was for crops, and it's got a little die cut, um, which is kind of fun because the mugs then each have their little handles that stick out. Um, love that piece. This is a swirling accordion. So we just saw a stepped accordion. And the stepped accordion, basically, the score, the distance between the scores, changes. Now let's instead change the angle of the scores. Same accordion fold, but now our scores are going like this, this. I have to do the hand movements. <laughs> okay, so watch this. It swirls and unfold. Now, in essence, it's just a long rectangle with angled scores, but you get this out of it when you change the angle, and you're just accordion folding, but you're accordion folding at an angle, and it swirls as it goes. This piece was a direct mailer, but it went in with a large card, and they slid this in on top, so it was a big kind of um, you know card first, and then they slid this piece in. Very cool. Um, okay, this is kind of on the extreme side. It's just fun, a beautiful piece. This is called a twist fold. This is an advanced twist fold. Um, you pull it, and it starts to untwist. Everybody loves a twist fold. What can I say? <laughs> Except the people who hand fold them. They don't love the twist fold. Okay, but beautiful piece. Um, this is a traveling snake fold. So snake folds are basically roll folds but they can unroll in different directions. So a classic snake goes around, kind of in a circle, unroll, 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 unroll. A traveling snake can unroll in any direction. So this one is a really cool example of the subject matter being appropriate for the format. This was for a modular furniture series. This unrolls, unrolls, unrolls. So just such a cool use of the appropriate content for the appropriate format. But you can also take this type of a thing and make a really small version of it. It doesn't have to be a zillion panels and things like that. So just fun on the extreme. And so now I just want to show you some formats and creative ways for mail. This one I love. I, I love a classic sleeve mailer. All this is is a sleeve with an insert. But um, kind of in the, in the detail category, this one could gone in the detail category, but I like it in the format category. Um, I love that the thumb pull is angled. Usually you see a half circle thumb pull. I love this little detail of it having an angle, kind of like a little triangle. It's got a little shot of red that says, pull here. Um, I love that. And it just opens up and the insert comes out. Simple format, but really fun to open, fun to reveal. Um, I love that little uh, angle thumb pull. This was for BMW. It's a simple little um, trifold form, or not trifold, I'm sorry, uh, iron cross. But it's got a gate, so watch. It's got a little mini gate. So little short panels that open like this. Simple little format, but really nice, fun review. Um, I like that one. Oops. Okay. All right, so this one I wanted to show because um, this is a great example of when the piece itself, so you've heard of, obviously, we hear sort of freemiums, kind of the freebie you give, uh, the kind of the not-for-profit space. This piece, the format itself is the freemium. So, that's the back side, just so you can see it's got a mailing panel. This piece is all in one. So there's a short trim panel. This is just a trifold, short trim panel. Light, um, light tech fugitive glue, left and right, to make a pocket for the letter and the response mechanisms, things like that. Those go in there. But when you take those out and pull it open, it becomes a commemorative poster. Very, very, very successful format. If anybody here is in the not-for-profit space, this format performs and performs and performs. Um, I think I've got two more formats for you. This one is a corner, it's a modified corner folder. So 
Corner folder, square sheet of paper, four corners folding to the middle. They were used a lot of times for invitations and things, but if you add an additional fold on the horizontal, it becomes a rectangular shape. You'd have to tuck in this front panel um, for mail, but I just love the format. Opens up, down, out. Home Depot did one with the panels tucked in. Um, lots of neat ways to do that. Oh, that was my last one. All right, so my message, of course, is put print to work for you. Soak in all the great things you're going to learn. I'm going to be around. Um, I'm happy to talk to anybody, questions, just chitty-chatting. Um, I'm really, really happy to be here. I'm going to be here both days, and so I hope I get to talk to everybody. Thanks for your time and attention, and enjoy the day.